and new technologies. In fact, these are among the themes of specific sessions in today's conference. My observations would be mainly in the context of central banking in general across countries. Let me first focus on monetary policy and I shall be brief. The three decades of restrained volatility of business cycles and the coexistence of price stability and uninterrupted growth that preceded the global financial crisis perhaps lulled central banks into the belief that inflation expectations are enduringly anchored. The beast of inflation of the 1970s and 80s and the early 80s seemed completely behind our times. Conditioned by that experience, central banks shed their role of lender of the last resort and became lender of the first resort to defend their financial systems when they responded to the global financial crisis 2008. Central banks continued from their GFC moment and once again rushed to the front line as warriors of the first resort to protect and preserve lives and livelihood when the COVID-19 pandemic hit the world. Central banks took interest rates to all-time lows, undertook unconventional policy measures to reach out to interest rates across the spectrum, including at the longer end, and gave assurances about low for longer interest rates. This was an uncharacteristic departure from the monetary mysticism that had prevailed up to the 1990s. Clearly, central banking has evolved in line with the developments of the 21st century. While the pandemic, while the pandemic time measures provided the much needed support to the economies, in the aftermath of the pandemic, the limits and downsides of easy monetary policy in protecting economic activity in a crisis period became more evident. Today, rightly or wrongly, the central banks are accused of distributional consequences of their actions.